All right, Marv, so you look great, you sound great. How is the family? How are you feeling? Well, everything is going good. I'm in Chicago staying active with a bunch of other things, but thank you for inquiring. It always amazes me. Guys like you with such success over the years. It's been 20 years since you last coached. Do you still have that desire? Do you still have that burn inside of you? Well, I'll tell you, I coached for 47 years, and I knew I would miss some things when the time came, but I also had missed doing other things I would like to do right, to travel to Europe and so on. But about three or four years after I retired, I really missed it bad, and I uh, spoke uh, with one or two of the owners, and they said, Marv, I, I don't know if the, at this age stage if that's it. So I've accommodated. Do you sit back and watch games now and kind of think of how you would do things or maybe do things differently? Uh, I, I look, and I realize also that I'm not as totally detailed in, 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 into the detail of what they've done. But sure, I look like every other fan and say, oh, why did he call that player? Why don't they hurry up? Or why did they call that timeout? I do it like everybody else. Before you became the man of the Buffalo Bills with all the success, there was that era in Kansas City those five years, and then in 1982, they fired you. Was there any fear for you at that time that, that may have been your last shot at being an NFL head coach? Well, well, sure, uh, when you get let go like that. Actually, we had gotten better incrementally each year uh, during the five, very little bit each year, but we got better finally a nine and seven season. Uh, but I was gone, so there was a period I did coach in the USFL for one year with the Chicago Blitz, but then the league went out of business, and then it was Bill Polian and Mr. Wilson, and believe it or not, Lamar Hunt, the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs, who spoke with Ralph Wilson on the phone and told him he felt he had made a great error in firing me, so that helped at least uh, Mr. Wilson uh, hiring me. At what point did you know you had a special team? With the Bills? With the Bills. It didn't take long because when I arrived in midseason of 1986, although they weren't stars yet, Jim Kelly was already there. So was Andre Reed. So was Bruce Smith, Daryl Talley. We had high draft choices coming. Shane Conlon, Cornelius Bennett, Thurman Thomas. So uh, by, uh, the, by going into the 88 season, I said, hey, this is a special group. And they had a little bit of experience by then. And we did go all the way to the AFC championship game in 1988, losing to the Bengals. When you have players like the ones you just mentioned, was it difficult to manage all of those personalities? No, not really. They were great guys. I mean, there are quirks. There are times when I'd get angry or they'd feel that uh, maybe I'm being coming down too hard, I imagine. Uh, but no, they were a great group of guys. We had determined, Bill Polian and I and Mr. Wilson, we would bring only guys of high character onto our team. And they were all very team-oriented individuals. Their personalities may have varied, extroverts, quiet guys, whatever, but they showed up for work every day. They didn't place blame. They worked hard in practice. They were a great group. What did they teach you about yourself as a person? Uh, I, teach me to lower my voice once in a while, I guess. Uh, once in a while. No, they, they taught me that everybody makes a mistake now and then. Uh, own up and go back to work. Do you still pinch yourself that you went to four straight Super Bowls? Pinch yourself that you went to four straight Super Bowls. Yeah, yeah. you look back, going to four straight Super Bowls has not been done by any others. Uh, we lost them all, and that, that, that's painful, but I, I'll remember the good so much more. Uh, it's going to be a very difficult thing to ever duplicate. I won't say it will never be duplicated, but right now no one has. Is the pain of losing those Super Bowls, is that still something you carry with you, or do you look at it as the pride of getting to them? No, I don't carry the pain. There's a period where or you mourn after you lose the game. But you better get over it, or else you're going to be a failure forever if you, if you just lie there and whimper and quit and say, what's the use? There's a period you mourn, then you own up, what should I have done better? Then you, um, uh, you, you recognize the good. Look at these people I'm working, look at this organization, look at these fans, and then you go to work. And that's the way we did it. I want to ask you about this summer. There were a lot of different emotions this summer, including heading to Canton, Ohio, to be a part of Andre Reed's induction. What was that like for you to be there, to see all of your boys and that hug at the end with all of you coming together? I tell you, every time I go to that Hall of Fame, I, I can't believe I'm there. 
I look around and I say, these are the these guys here, they're the reason I'm here. I look at some of the other legendary veterans from 30 or 40 years ago, and I see the look on their faces, wow, am I really here? It, it's an, uh, a truly awesome feeling. And part of being there this year was Jim Kelly was able to be there, and he threw that pass to Andre at the end. He fought a tough battle this summer, and there's still ways to go. Uh, how difficult was it for you to see him have to go through what he went through this past summer? Well, to say it was difficult then, it wasn't. To learn the news originally, very difficult. It, it was sort of uplifting to see the progress he had made when he was there at, at the uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremonies. And he's continued to make progress. He's still a long battle ahead. When you talk about a guy's a fighter, you can't talk about anybody who's going to top that guy. Did you have any doubt the strength he would be able to provide seeing him out on the field and now here really Kelly tough embodies what he is is that correct well he is and he, beyond that he had fantastic support from a wonderful family uh, his brothers his father his dear wife Jill his daughters Cameron and Aaron his former teammates the whole city of Buffalo in fact the whole nation I live in Chicago now and you can't imagine how many people there keep inquiring to me about Jim's progress the Buffalo Bills will remain the Buffalo Bills with the I see you smiling about it the Pagool is purchasing the team how important was it that this team will remain in Western New York fantastic it belongs there I would have been I would have been crushed mortified whatever the word is uh, I'm so glad to see it I wish the Pagool as well I work for a fantastic owner the Buffalo Bills and Ralph Wilson and I got a feeling they've got some fantastic owners coming in right now I want to ask you a little bit about Ralph and your relationship with him how happy would he have been to see this team stay put and, and kind of what is he he taught you throughout the years oh yeah R Ralph he loved Buffalo he lived in Detroit but Buffalo was every bit as much as his home uh, he'd be elated I know I know his wife Mary Wilson was delighted that the team would remain here so are the people in Buffalo so am I, so are you, so are our viewers. And finally for you, do, do you f keep up with the team a lot or is it kind of something you watch casually these days? Uh, I can't say I study them very closely. The real good fans, the family, uh, the fantasy football addicts know more than I do right now. What would it mean to you though to see this team uh, snap that playoff drought pretty soon? Oh yeah, I think it would be wonderful. The Buffalo Bills deserve it. The fans of the Buffalo Bills in, in the city and here in Rochester, in Canada, so many people here in Western New York deserve it. Marv, I appreciate the time. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, so Thank you. Much. Thank you Justin.